Welcome to the Hawthorns. It's just gone quarter past six in the morning. It's absolutely pouring down with rain. The, the light hasn't come up yet and we're off to Sunderland. So I uh, just arrived at the Stadium of Light, absolute nightmare getting here. Um, the coach uh, broke down on, on the way here, uh, was on the hard shoulder for about an hour. The windscreen uh, wipe wipers stopped working. Um, I heard a lot of Albion fans have had difficulties getting here today. Um, I think one of the other Albion coaches, Coach 2, uh, broke down early on, on in their journey at Tamworth. Uh, they've got absolutely no chance of getting here. A lot of Albion fans are traveling by car, been stuck in traffic. Um, Plenty of motorway issues uh, get to the Stadium of Light, but uh, it's really poor from the Albion, providing uh, the, the fans with such poor coach travel. The weather is absolutely dreadful here at the Stadium of Light as well, pouring down with rain. Honestly, like uh, in the concourse right now, and it's very, very quiet. It does make you wonder whether a lot of Albion fans really have struggled to get here. But it's a very early morning, but onto the football now, and uh, it's a massive game in the Championship. Sunderland versus West Brom live on Sky Sports here at the Stadium of Lights. Uh, team news is out for the baggies. I really do like the team. Uh, Kyle Bartley returns. Sarmiento and Dian Garner play, play together. Uh, John Swift in the team as well. Jason Malumbi comes in for the OK Koslu, uh, who is suspended for today's game. And Josh Madger starts up, up top for the baggies as well. Still no Jed Wallace. But it's a massive game at the top of the championship today. You know, uh, Sunderland, if they win, I believe they can go up into the playoffs. Albion obviously in that uh, top, top, top six at the moment as well. Big talking point going into today's game, obviously in the week, uh, Sunderland manager Tony Mowbray, who Albion fans are quite familiar with, uh, did get the sack. I don't mean this to be disrespectful Sunderland fans, like I, I do think Sunderland are probably the biggest club in the league in terms of fan base, uh, but I, I don't quite understand uh, the sacking of Tony Mowbray. I think they've got to be careful what they wish for. Tony Mowbray's been a big part of the, the rebuild here at Sunderland um, did very well last season, you know, first season back in the championship to get the playoffs. Not many teams do that, uh, come back up and get into the top six straight away. And they've had a fair start to uh, this season as well. Uh, you know, as I say, if they win today, they could uh, be in the top six come the end of the day. Very, very strange decision in my opinion. But it's been a right trek getting here uh, this morning. Hopefully the baggies can pick up all three points. Well, it's not a bad ground, is it? Uh, probably going to be one of the most impressive grounds to visit at this level of football. Absolutely massive. Hopefully we're in for a very good afternoon of football.
chance for a penalty for Sunderland. From all the way up here, it did look like one. Referee's obviously got a better view than us. Sunderland fans not happy. I'll tell you, that was an incredible run, though. Albion were playing rugby for a minute, trying to hack him down. No one could get him down. He just kept going. Looks like matches going off injured. Uh, can barely walk, he's having to have assistance uh, getting off the pitch. I presume Thomas and Sante will come on for him. Correction, uh, Tom Fellows is going to come on for him. Half time, uh, nil nil. Uh, probably a fair result at half time. It's been a good half of football, to be fair. Uh, very even, not much to split the two sides. Albion have played some really good football at times. Dian Garner and uh, Sarmiento uh, providing some magic. Um, Sunderland looked dangerous on the counter attack. Uh, we're, we're looking a bit open every time down the wings. Uh, they've got so much space to run into. Sunderland fans aren't happy with the uh, referee either. Uh, I got a message from my mate. Apparently the, the goal that they scored that was ruled out for offside was clearly onside. Uh, they had a penalty turned down as well. I, I don't think that was a penalty from what my mate has been telling me. Uh, from here it looks Stonewall. Uh, but Alex Palmer's kick, it hasn't been great in that first half. And again, something they struggled with in the last few weeks. Hopefully Madge is okay as well. He went off injured. But as it stands, the game is in the balance and it could go either way in the second half. BCA and Shalab are on uh, for Dian Garner and Malumbi. About half an hour to go now, uh, still nil nil. One nil Sunderland. Uh, they score from a free kick. They've had a very good ten minutes or so to be fair. Putting a lot of pressure on the Albion. A bit easy for me. Shouldn't have a free header in the box like that from a set piece. Twenty minutes to find an equaliser. Thomas Asante gets a goal back for the Albion. 86 minutes on the clock. Two on to Sudland. Still in this Albion.
So uh, full time here in Sunderland, uh, Sunderland 2, West Brom 1. Um, good game of football, but um, disappointing in the end. Albion really didn't show up in that second half. Yes, the referee is poor. A lot of decisions didn't go our way. He's poor for both sides though. Um, you know, in the first half, uh, apparently uh, their offside goal uh, should have stood. But I honestly have no complaints. Uh, you know, the first half was even. It could have gone either side. The second half, Sunderland were the better side. Albion just didn't come out. But I must say, a brilliant stadium to visit. Uh, you know, 40,000 people uh, watching a championship game. Incredible home support. Uh, they made some noise throughout the game. So did the Albion fans. Uh, you know, it was a struggle to get here today. Uh, but we still came in our numbers and supported the team well. Uh, Sunderland fans, you know, n nice people. Uh, very n nice and welcoming. But I always enjoy coming to the northeast. Uh, really nice people. Uh, time for a very long journey home. I'll see you at the Hawthorns. So uh, welcome back to the Hawthorns. Uh, we left here and it was dark and we've returned back and it's dark. It's now about half seven. For context, I got out of my bed at uh, five o'clock this morning. It's been a very long day, a very frustrating day at times. With obviously uh, all, all the coach issues and uh, Albin's performance on the pitch. But I am very glad I did it. Uh, it was a great ground to visit. Um, uh, I really enjoyed visiting the Stadium of Light. Uh, fair play to Sunderland uh, after a long coach journey home, uh, reflecting on the game. I think they did deserve uh, the win. Uh, you know, Albin really didn't show up in that second half. It was quite a poor performance. And I think we really are starting to uh, pay the price of too many injuries. Um, I, I want to comment on uh, the tackle on Josh Madger. I saw um, a, a highlight of it on Twitter. It's a very bad tackle. I think he should have seen red the Sunderland player. And obviously, he does go on uh, the same player to, to score the winner for them. The, the referee for both sides at the Stadium of Light today was awful. Some shocking decisions. You know, that Bellingham uh, goal that was rolled off, offside, really poor decision. Uh, the red card and so many decisions went uh, against Albion. But ultimately, I don't think we can have too many complaints as I don't think we did really deserve anything out of the game. I do apologise for the recording at times today. Uh, it's a bit of a different angle to record on being so high up. I'm not used to that. Um, so it wasn't as sharp as it usually is. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to my channel if you are new. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, fans.